Good morning, everyone. Or afternoon, I should say. It's really afternoon time, at least for me, probably where you are too. So I want to thank you all for joining today. This is our K through eight homeschool webinar. We're going to be talking about how our homeschool program works, our K through five curriculum, and then our sixth through eighth grade curriculum. We do have a chat pod and a Q&A pod. So feel free as we're going, if you want to um, type in any questions you might have on Zoom, I'll make sure to answer those questions at the end of our time today at the webinar. I do have some links to share. Um, not quite sure if I'm gonna post them as I go or wait till the very end, we'll see how it goes. Um, so keep your eyes posted in chat for those links. There'll be links to our websites um, that explains a little bit more information about what we offer. Sometimes it's easier to have the, the site up so you can read the policy or um, explanation later about things we'll be talking about. So let's go ahead and get started with a prayer, if you'll join me. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said, greater love than this no man has, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Through the intercession of St. Maximilian Kolbe, whose life illustrated such love, we ask you to answer our prayers. Grant, O Lord Jesus, that we too may give ourselves entirely without reserve to the love and service of our heavenly queen in order to better love and serve our fellow man in imitation of your humble servant, Maximilian. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, again, thank you all for being here today. My name is Mrs. Ashley Massey. I'm an academic advisor at Colby Academy along with the Dean of K through eight students. So we're gonna walk through um, what Colby Academy is, what we do in case you're interested about joining our homeschool program. So our main mission um, is to provide affordable, customizable and academically rigorous Catholic education throughout the world. We have students all over the world. Now salvation is our ultimate goal and our flexible approach allows parents to tailor our curriculum to the best aid in the formation of each child in our Catholic tradition of faith. Now, why would you want to school at home? Well, for some parents, their answer is they want to really claim that role as primary educator of their child, right? So that's one of the top reasons we hear from parents. Others could be if you're looking to change from a negative school environment to a positive environment. Sometimes there are things going on in at school we don't want our children exposed to. So when you homeschool, you have a little bit more control over that environment. You may also want to receive a, a higher quality of education you control what they're learning, so you have the final say. Um, we also offer a flexible format, including a built-in faith formation to all of our courses, as Christ is the center of our courses. Now, homeschool children also have a tendency to score better on standardized tests, so some parents would <laughs> see that as a benefit as well. Um, and we also have that classical curriculum that a lot of parents truly love and want their child exposed to. Now, why enroll with Colby Academy? Well, let's talk about our educational philosophy. At Colby Academy, we are Catholic, classical, and we are based in that Ignatian method of learning. So we seek to form the whole person in truth and goodness, the end goal being that students find their salvation in Jesus Christ, right? So there are three pillars are Catholic. We have orthodox curriculum and faithful fac faculty and staff that guide our aspects of your child's education. We have a core belief statement. So I'm gonna go ahead and post that in our chat. So if you'd like to read our core beliefs, they'll be in chat right there in Zoom. Our second pillar is that we are classical. So we offer a rigorous classical approach, which forms students' minds and souls, focusing on the great works of Western civilization and a premier math and science curriculum. Finally, our last pillar is that we're customizable. So our offerings, we are traditional, online or self-paced asynchronous home education programs. And they're designed to meet the unique needs of your students because we know that every student learns differently. So we wanna have different formats to meet their educational needs. We also offer course plans when you enroll with us, advisor support, record keeping of grades. We are accredited with NAPSIS and Cognia. We do offer that customization of courses, 
So if your student is possibly behind or ahead a level or two in courses, you can enroll up to two levels above or below your, your student's current grade level. So if they need some extra help, they're able to do that. We offer standardized testing and we have a fully stocked bookstore. It's quite amazing. There are many things in there that I would love to order. I'm gonna go ahead and share that link to our testing services there. And again, our core statement of beliefs. And finally, our bookstore. These are all handy links to have. So those are some of the reasons you would want to enroll with Colby. It's some of the things that we offer that we'll be talking about. So the first one is advisor support. So as an academic advisor, I can speak to this. I help families. I kind of think of myself as a coach, educational coach. Um, I'm helping them choose their courses for your students. Um, we might suggest you do an end of grade level assessment test that we offer on our website where you can give it to them at the end of that grade level, see where they learned certain concept or skills, see where they maybe need some more help and suggest courses based upon that. We'll offer homeschooling helps, uh, tips or tricks. Most of us either were homeschooled or have children who are homeschooled. So we have firsthand experience of how homeschooling works and are here to help you along the way. We offer subject specific help. We do have um, a team of special needs advisors who will help assist with your child. If there are special learning needs you might need help with, um, we can talk about that with our special needs advisors. And you have unlimited access to us. So you can email or set an appointment with us at any time. Um, and we're more than happy to help. One of the things that we talk about quite often with families is scheduling. So how do you structure your day and your week? So we normally would wanna start when we're homeschooling with the more difficult subjects first, early in the morning when our brains are usually more <laughs> open to learning um, and you wanna break up those subjects. We wanna have time in between subjects where there's a break, uh, maybe a bathroom break, grab some water, uh, play, exercise, move around. Um, we want to make sure that our students, it's mind and body so that they're um, using their body as well to take those breaks and to give their brain a break. Um, we can also combine students. This is a big one with families who have multiple children who are enrolled with us and um, mom is maybe primary educator during the day. How do we balance teaching four kids in four different grade levels, all of these subjects? Well, you can combine um, subjects for those students such as in religion, history, and science since there is a lot of overlap there. We also might suggest how much time you would spend on specific subjects based upon grade level. If you're looking for a good resource, um, we do have our Colby program guide, which does offer some I mean, fantastic information, not only about our curriculum, but about that um, time that is suggested a student be spending in each subject based upon their grade level. Again, it's just an estimated amount of time. So each child will differ, um, but that program guide, there is a, um, a, a graph in there to show you the suggested amount of times. Now at Colby, we offer three ways to educate your students. The first is traditional school at home. So that's primarily what this webinar is going to be about our homeschool courses. Our second way is the self-paced courses. And the third way are our live online courses. And you can see there with the bullet points, the grade levels that covers, what that includes. So with traditional school at home, homeschool courses, Colby will offer everything you need to educate at home, such as those textbooks, course plans, tests, answer keys, grading services, self-paced, which are also homeschool courses, but they have a digital component or format. Students will watch pre-recorded video classes and they'll follow the online course plans to master each subject at their own pace. So you'll have access to that course for 12 months. The student can move as quickly or as slowly as they want. Then in our live online courses, students learn in that virtual format among peers with a live instructor who facilitates discussion, lectures, and grades the coursework. We also offer honors and AP courses for our students in high school. So let's break down the traditional school at home courses. We have a course plan and exams that are provided. Now, when you're homeschooling, parents can modify the homeschool courses. So that's not something that you can do in a live course. So if you have a student who has special learning needs and you would like to modify our curriculum, you would want to homeschool your student. That provides you the most amount of flexibility with um, 
picking and choosing how you want to educate your child using our materials as your foundation. So our course plans will offer you abundant of inf abundance of information on different activities or pages to read during that week, questions, quizzes, et cetera. You as the parent can choose, I only want to utilize maybe two or three of those things this week. So you can modify that as you feel is needed for your student. If you would like for us to keep records of your student grade, you can send in sample work for credit each quarter or semester, depending upon the age of your student or grade. So in K through five, we work on a quarterly system. Uh, six through eighth and even high school, we work on a semesterly system. So we'll talk about the grade reporting process in a bit. Now, when you're homeschooling, you can have the option to have the schoolwork graded by the parent or through a grading service, which we call Homeschool Plus. So let's talk about what Homeschool Plus is. So it's particularly for students in third to 12th grade, and it's for students who are enrolled full time. So there's four different um, enrollment types. We will talk about those at the end of the webinar, but for our information right now, we're just talking about full-time students who would like the Homeschool Plus grading services. So what you can do is if you choose this um, in your enrollment uh, form, you'll have your own personal evaluator to grade your students' work. And this is a great service because it also includes composition workshops. So students can opt into Homeschool Plus in their enrollment form, and you would um, submit different assignments to be graded by the same evaluator. So as you can see, you can purchase this service in blocks of 10, 20, or 50. So that means if you purchase 50 throughout the school year, um, there's a certain deadline, I believe it's September 1st through June 30th, you can submit 50 assignments for that student for the same evaluator to grade and offer feedback on. It can be from any subjects. They can also be from non-Colby subjects, which is kind of amazing. So if you really enjoy using a, a, a curriculum that we don't provide, you can use that curriculum and have it recorded with us and submit those assignments with that non-Colby curriculum to our Homeschool Plus service to be graded. So it's great for students, especially um, <laughs> who get frustrated when their parent is grading their English essays. That's a tough one I hear a lot about. Yeah. So it's a great service. Again, you don't have to purchase 50. If you were to purchase 10 or 20, um, you can always add on more uh, blocks throughout the school year. So that's um, a very flexible uh, service. And it's great because when you submit assignments and the evaluator grades it, you can use that graded sample to submit during the grade reporting process to serve as um, your reporting of their grade for that subject. So it comes in handy. All right, let's talk about our course plans. I love our course plans. They are so easy to read um, and we also make them easy to find. So in chat, we have a link that I've posted. It's to our course plan samples. We offer a sample of every single course plan we have for every grade, every subject. It's great if you wanna preview what it looks like. But basically there is a weekly layout in kindergarten and in first through eighth grade, that changes to a daily layout from Monday through Thursday. So our school week will always be listed Monday through Thursday. You know that a lot of families either have one day a week, maybe it's Friday, maybe it's not Friday, where they'll do co-op activities, um, maybe, you know, field trips outside of the house. Uh, they might just want a day for family, grandma to come over and teach baking class, whatever it might be. We leave Friday as a day where we do not assign schoolwork. So you can also use it as a buffer day. So if you have Monday through Thursday work and then anything you need to catch up on, it can happen on Friday. So again, that's part of the flexibility we offer. Now we're talking about our course plans, all of the components of our Colby's curriculum guides, they strengthen students through the four stages of intellectual development, which is understanding what is read, retention of explicit information, recognition of implicit concepts, and making connections or showing mastery. So the course plans are the roadmaps to the first, third, and fourth stages. They provide the parent, teacher, and the student with key points for understanding and also help make connections across subjects and to our Catholic faith, which is implemented in those course plans that I said earlier. The discussion questions and key points focus attention to recognition of implicit concepts, while the paper topics primarily focus on making connections. The quarterly exams generally have multiple sections designed to test the student on understanding, retention, recognition, and mastery. 
So again, uh, our course plans, I find they are great. Abundance of information there and different uh, assignments you can give your students or you can opt out of doing certain things. Again, you are free to modify. This is an example of math for grade two as a homeschool course plan. So you can see um, the daily layout there. You can see what the student has to read, any daily assignments, guidelines. There's also uh, an area to report grades there as well. It's pretty easy to read. So let's say you've enrolled with us and you would like us to keep a record of those grades. So grade reporting. This is a service that we provide. It is definitely not a requirement. Some families think that they have to report grades to us. They do not. Um, so if you do choose to not file a report, um, you won't have a report card from Colby Academy because we cannot verify the grades. So if you will want a report card for your student, or a diploma in eighth grade, or if you stay with us in high school, a diploma for high school, you will need to submit grades to us in the grade reporting process. So typically in K through five, you want to report quarterly. At the end of quarter one, gather your materials, you'll scan them and email them to us. In grades six through 12, you will report at the end of each semester. Again, collect your materials, scan and email them to us. Now, you also can choose to report on a yearly basis. Um, for parents who are new to Colby, I would suggest either reporting quarterly or reporting at the end of the semester, depending upon your student's grade. Um, there are some uh, specific things you have to do in reporting grades. So if you submit it once at the quarter or semester mark and the advisor is reviewing that and verifying grades, and if there's any things that were missed, we can easily fix it instead of submitting the whole year at one time. And there may be multiple things we have to fix. So it's kind of better if you're starting out with us to submit quarterly or semesterly first, and then you can always move to a yearly reporting format once you're comfortable with the grade reporting process. Now, what do you submit when you're reporting grades to us? We'll have a grade submission form, which is essentially a, a parent report card that you will fill out and send to us. So it has the subjects they're taking, the letter grade that you have assigned, you'll sign and date that and send it to us. Then there'll be sample work that is included. So that means if they are in K through five, it will be one student completed sample that is graded by a parent or through our Homeschool Plus evaluator. And you'll have one sample per quarter per subject. If they are in grades six through eighth and they're reporting semesterly, you'll have two student completed samples that are, have a grade on it per semester per subject. At the end of the school year, you have the option of reporting to us the attendance record. We will keep that as a record. It's only a requirement if you are homeschooling in the state of California. Otherwise, it is optional for the parent to submit at the end of the school year if you do not live in California. Now, you have two options of how to submit this information to Colby Academy. You can either mail it to our address seen there, or you can email it to k8reports at colby.org. A little tidbit on that, it usually takes two to three or possibly more weeks to um, finalize the grade reporting process after you've submitted it to us. And that usually takes a bit longer if you're mailing it to us first. So if you need report cards back from us by a certain date, I would make sure that you send in your work at least a month early. So now that we've talked about some of the services we provide, let's go ahead and talk about our curriculum. So we're going to do an overview for each grade or each subject and then the grades there. So K through five is going to be first. Let's talk about religion. In kindergarten, they're using the Who Am I textbook. And then in uh, first through fifth grade and continued on into eighth grade, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, they'll be moving to the Faith and Life series in union with the catechism. So right now they're going to be using that St. Joseph First Communion Catechism in first and second grade. And then in third grade, they switch to the St. Joseph Baltimore Catechism. Some parishes will accept um, the first and second grade religion program that we see here as first communion prep at your parish. So that's something that you can find out and ask from your parish priest if this would be a curriculum that they would accept for preparing your child for their first communion. Now in language arts, 
for kindergarten, we have um, an emphasis on reading and phonics. <clears throat> so you can see the textbooks are listed on the right hand side if you want to know what textbooks we're using. Then in first grade, we're adding on to reading and phonics to English and grammar and spelling. And then we're going to build on that every year. So you're going to see the same thing in second grade. In third grade, you're going to see the um, removal of phonics to become more of an optional course with the addition of literature. Personally, I love our literature course. Um, I, it is a fantastic homeschool resource. Um, we have the primary literature course, the elementary literature course, and um, again, offered later in middle school as the junior high literature course. And it's basically a list of anywhere I think between 20 to 40 either books, poems, short stories, saint stories, and there is a course plan for each book, poem, or short story listed or saint story. So it's, it's one course plan, but you actually get about 40 to 50 course plans. Fantastic resource. Um, you get a lot, of, a lot of good content there for that enrollment for literature. Let's move on to fourth grade. So fourth grade, we see grammar composition is still there. We have literature, vocabulary, reading, and then we have that optional phonics and then the optional classical composition. So I'm just gonna grab a drink of water and then we're gonna talk about classical composition because there are some unique things there. All right, so classical composition. Um, there, this is a course where you typically want to take it in order. So we have the first course starting in fourth grade. It's classical composition fable stage. So let's say you have older students with us and you want them to take that classical composition. Let's say that they're in this sixth grade. You're going to want to start them at the beginning stage of fable. Now they might work through that fable stage in the first semester and then in their second semester you can add on the narrative stage. Again they might just do fable stage that whole year if they're older but this is a course that we suggest they start in fourth. It is optional. Another caveat here it's important. So you're going to see in fourth grade um, there's grammar and composition which is our voyages and English four book. So any of our, our English grammar and composition course will be used with voyages. Voyages, the textbook is set up so that one half of the book is grammar work, the other half of the book is composition. So if you're gonna enroll your student in our English grammar and composition course, along with classical composition, what you're gonna wanna do, <laughs> if you don't want your student taking two composition courses at once, is to just not do the composition work that is in the voyages book. So you would only be doing the English grammar from voyages and the classical composition for composition. So that's just my little tidbit there. Um, some parents who enroll for the first time with us think they have to be doing both and then their student is overwhelmed by the amount of writing they're doing. So that's fourth grade. We move on to fifth grade. We see it's um, the same sort of setup with um, what courses are offered, but we see that reading has now been moved down to an optional course. And so their, their three main language arts course will be grammar comp, literature, and vocabulary. Now also in these grades, we offer penmanship as needed. So we don't offer a course plan for penmanship, but we do um, offer books that you can use in our bookstore. And we do have it as a subject that can be reported on the report card. So you can assign your students a letter grade. And we see in second grade is when they start their cursive writing. So it changes from manuscript script writing to cursive writing in second grade. And then that's what's being built on in third, fourth, and fifth grade. Again, as needed, not a required course. I should say Colby doesn't have any required courses in K through eight. We have recommended courses where you need to take courses in certain language arts subjects and math and science, and then we'll have optional recommended courses. And you can choose as parent which ones you'd like your student to take. So let's move into history in K through five. Um, second grade is where we'll see history introduced in the child's Bible history, which talks about uh, the events of the Old and New Testament. So it's sort of a combination of history and religion. 
Um, then in third grade, we have a new curriculum this year. It's Stories of a Changing World. It's a brand new history program of biographical narratives. Really excited about that program. And then in fourth grade, we start to see a split. So we have um, two different textbooks uh, that you can pick between. So we have ancient history in fourth grade, which is famous men of Greece and famous men of Rome. And then we have world history, which is founders of freedom, a land of our lady series, two different textbooks or technically three different textbooks. And in our bookstore, you can see a preview of all of our books. There should be a few pages of each book available to, to see so you can kind of get a feel of what the textbook might be like. I will say that the Land of Our Lady series is an older history textbook. So if you're looking for more of that type of feel, that's what you'd want to be choosing. Um, the Ancient History, um, and American History for textbook option one is a newer textbook. So if you would like something new, that's what you'd go with. I can tell you our fourth graders in our online program who are using that famous men of Greece and famous men of Rome books absolutely love it. Fifth grade, we have the Catholic textbook project from Sea to Shining Sea. And then the Land of Our Lady series as the optional, which is Bearers of Freedom. Now I will say just um, for a little bit more information about fourth grade history for the ancient history that's designed designed to introduce the student to great figures of ancient Greek and Roman history and myth and to trace the historical rise and lasting influence of the civilizations and C to shining sea will cover us history from before Columbus's arrival and continues chronologically up to JFK. All right, we also offer geography. So that begins in the first grade. So you'll have that option for first through fifth grade if you'd like to add that on. And of course, math. So we have a, a little change in math for this upcoming school year. So if you're homeschooling with us now, you'll see that this is a little bit different. Our main two options for math are going to be either Singapore or Sadlier. <clears throat> for the sake of ease, it's basic, uh, the math course for a sadly year is called progress in mathematics. So that's what's offered in either first grade or second grade in our homeschool courses. We do still offer Saxon. Um, it's an technically considered an archived course plan now. So we won't make any updates to it, but if you prefer to use Saxon, that's also available to you there. We've also um, stopped using modern curriculum press, but we would still have that as an option for our kindergarten students. All right, so science, K through five. In kindergarten, this science program will give the students their first look into the beauty of God's wonderful creation. And it's the basic introduction to the life, earth, and physical science. And then they're moving into Harcourt in first through fifth grades. So that will include uh, the topics of life science, the components, habitats, and conservation of ecosystems, rainforest and coral reefs, and earth science, the atmosphere and weather prediction, um, and water cycle, and more. Um, so it will it will cover all of those materials and more. We do have, um, I think, in physical science, they're talking about electricity, magnetism, motion and forces, and simple machines, including levers, pulleys, and wheels. So it's a great program, very vibrant. Our students love, especially all the pictures. So again, I would encourage you to go to the bookstore and see samples of those books there. And then we also option, offer the optional foreign language courses of Latin in starting in third, fourth, and fifth grade. So in third grade, you can enroll in either the introduction to Latin, which is the very, very basic um, way to get your child introduced to Latin, or you can start with Latina Christiana, or I'm sorry, elementary Latin one. So if you think your student is ready for elementary Latin one as a course, the full course, um, you could start there. But the intro to Latin is something that's very basic, really good for beginners. And with any foreign language, it's very important to go slow, especially if it's not a language that's spoken in the home, which Latin is a dead language. So not many people <laughs> will be speaking it in their home. So learning Latin can be and should be a very slow process to make sure that foundation is firmly built for later years. So that brings us to the end of our overview of our K through five curriculum. We're gonna go ahead and move on over to six through eighth to look at our curriculum there. So for religion, again, we see that we're continuing on in that faith and life series with the St. Joseph Baltimore Catechism. 
But in seventh and eighth grade, we see that there's an additional course of Bible history. So in seventh grade, they'll be learning about the Old Testament. And in eighth grade, they continue that Bible history course with learning about the New Testament. So again, this is one of those great resources we offer kind of like literature. So even though it's one course, you'll get two different course plans. So you'll get a course plan for religion and a course plan for Bible history. Some of our seventh and eighth grader students will complete both that religion course and the Bible history course in the same year, or parents might opt to complete one or the other. It's really up to you. Now for language arts, we again see usually the courses that we recommend in sixth grade, which would be grammar and composition, literature and vocabulary with that reading phonics and classical composition being optional. Seventh grade, same thing, except for we've moved away from reading and phonics and now have just gone to the one optional course of classical composition. And another thing I should note, now this really particularly contains to, um, I think, first, second through sixth grade, is literature versus reading. Our courses in those, pro in those subjects have the same aim to teach the child how to read. They just go about it in different ways. I would not advise enrolling in both literature and reading, but picking one or the other. Our literature program focuses on using um, different books, saint stories, poems, things like of that nature, novels when they're in sixth or eighth grade, while reading uses that Catholic national reader, which is an older textbook. It's a typical reader type of style. Um, so that's just a, uh, something I would note. If you look at our program, the Colby program guide, it will help um, explain the difference between those two subjects to help you pick which one you'd prefer. But again, you can also go to the bookstore and see samples of the books that might help um, make your decision there a little bit easier as well. Following seventh, we go to eighth grade. Again, the same courses are recommended, grammar and composition, literature, vocabulary with optional classical composition. This classical composition is the last one we offer. The last stage is common topic, which is actually only a one semester course. We still offer penmanship for sixth and seventh grade. And in seventh, you can see it goes back to manuscript writing. And in eighth grade, we don't have anything available. It is something that's optional. You don't have a course plan with it. We do offer the books in the bookstore. History. History, the first option, again, is following the Catholic textbook project. So you can see those there. And then your second option is that still that Land of Our Lady series. Math, we have Singapore. And then we also have progress in mathematics, sadlier in sixth grade. Now, seventh grade, we have foundations of algebra seven, which is sadlier, and then Saxon eight seven. In eighth grade, there's a lot of different options in eighth grade. So you can see them there. In eighth grade, you'll see algebra one is listed as eighth graders have the option of taking some high school courses in eighth grade for high school credit, which we'll talk about that in a few slides. But that's why you're going to see some high school level courses on some eighth grade options coming up. Science, same thing, we're continuing Harcourt in sixth grade. And then you also, if you decided not to do Harcourt, you could choose to do life science, earth science, or physical science. So typically, the progression of that would be life science first, earth science second, and then third would be physical science, which would be a high school course that an eighth grader could take. If you do choose to take physical science in eighth grade, the companion course for that would be algebra one. So we wanna make sure that students have or will be taking algebra one at the time that they're taking physical science. You can see the foreign language options we have in six through eight. Again, any foreign language is optional uh, K through eight. There are language requirements in high school, but not in six through eight. So you can see Latin is building here. We offer elementary Latin with the little Latin readers, or you can do the form Latins. In eighth grade, you have the option of doing Latin one, which is the high school Henley course that they use. That could be for high school credit. You can also do Greek. This is a basic Greek course. So you have the option of doing seventh grade Greek one, eighth grade Greek two. So that's how the overview of our 
K through eight curriculum. So let's talk about once you have your child in eighth grade, we're gonna delve into the courses an eighth grade student can take for high school credit. So if your student is ready for uh, high school level math, high school level science, or and or they can do all three, a high school level foreign language, they can take that high school level curriculum in eighth grade and it will they will earn the credit as a high school course they can apply to their high school um, courses and their credits requirement but the the grade that they earn in eighth grade as long as they pass the course but the grade that they earn will not affect the high school gpa so some eighth graders in our program right now they'll be taking algebra one physical science and or Spanish one, Latin one, or French one, which are all options for our ninth graders. So they would be earning credits in those three courses. Um, if you're thinking about doing this, one of the things I talk with parents through is um, there is no need to really rush students to earn high school credits sooner rather than later. I would really only suggest this if they're truly prepared to take algebra one, physical science, or a foreign language in eighth grade. They don't have to do it, so I wouldn't um, have an expectation there if they're not really prepared to do that. If they're taking um, high school level courses in eighth grade from an outside source, another school, they would have to, you'd have to submit an official transcript to us to have that credit on their high school diploma or high school credit or uh, and report card. Now, if you graduate um, Colby Academy in eighth grade and you've been enrolled with us the whole school year, and you complete at least five academic courses with us, including religion, English, and math, you will be issued an eighth grade diploma if you request one for your student. So that's a nice benefit for our eighth graders. Now, let's say you've heard everything today and you're thinking Colby Academy is a great fit for my family. Um, I love what you do, love the course plans, the flexibility. Let's talk about what you do next, right? The types of enrollment. So we have four different types of enrollment, full-time online, which is what the name implies. It's typically for families or for students who are doing the majority of their courses online. So this year that includes six online courses, labs, things of that sort. Then you have full-time standard or full-time flex. So these are the two options that our homeschool families are typically enrolling in. The main difference between the two is full-time standard comes with a bookstore credit. The bookstore credit can be used in our bookstore to purchase books. The credit usually covers the amount that you would need to purchase books from our bookstore for our recommended courses that your student would be taking. So if you're enrolling in, in six through eight, you can enroll in up to 12 courses. If you choose to have uh, all 12 courses uh, enrolled for your student, that bookstore credit probably will not cover all of the books needed for all of those courses. We don't typically recommend students taking that many courses in one year, but we do offer it as an option. So full-time standard is again, if you want that bookstore credit, maybe you don't have a lot of the books we offer and that's why you'd wanna go that route. Full-time flex does not have that bookstore credit. So this is an option more for homeschooling families who either been with us for a long time or we've been homeschooling for a long time and they've built up their homeschooling library to include a plethora of books. They don't need a bookstore credit because they have all the books they need at home that have been passed down from student to student. If you did choose full-time standard and you don't use it all, you can use it, usually use it for another year. I would check our uh, policies on that. So, and you can also use it for other things in the bookstore, such as we have Colby Spirit Wear and other sort of here, our, our main hype item is the coffee cup. <laughs> so you can always use it to buy a coffee cup. Um, use it for tea, coffee, hot cocoa, whatever you need for where you live. So that's the full-time standard versus full-time flex. Standard has the bookstore credit, flex does not. Then the final enrollment type is part-time. This is for families who do not need or want Colby to be the school of record for your student. Maybe you wanna take one course with us, two courses, you enroll in those individual courses only. And with the part-time enrollment, you will not have an assigned family advisor to walk with you and coach you. Um, 
So if you're looking for that service of advising, a full-time enrollment is kind of what you're looking for. And I'm going to go ahead and share our link to our tuition page in the chat if you'd like more information on enrollment types and tuition costs and what it covers and includes. So if you did want to enroll with us, our application to enroll is open along with enrollment. So if you have a new student with us, or you have a new student who you want to be with us, the first step you would do is to go to this website and complete the first step one, apply. You would put in your application to enroll. After you finish your application, you would do step two. Our step two enrollment process has just opened this week. So you can go ahead and do that process right after. You'll get a link to, to finish that. And enrollment, enrolling means you are telling us which enrollment type you are choosing. So that goes back to this previous slide. You're going to tell us if you're enrolling either in full-time online, full-time standard, full-time flex, or part-time, and then you'd pay your deposit based upon your enrollment type. So that's step two. Step three, which is not shown here, is course registration. So our course registration doesn't open until early March. So that's when you enroll in the courses you want your student to take. So right now you can at least do step one and step two, and then you'll be ready for when course registration opens in early March to register for specific courses. Again, if you're homeschooling, you can always take your time and review the website. There is no rush of when you need to register for courses right away. Online courses, there is a bit more of a rush to make sure that there are enough spots for the, the specific subject and class time that you want your student enrolled in. So that brings us to the end of our presentation today in our K-8 homeschool webinar. If you have any questions, feel free to go ahead and type them out in chat. I'd be more than happy to answer as many as I can. <laughs> what I can and what I do know, I will provide information for you. I know that there was one earlier, someone who's in Napa, would it be possible to have age appropriate groups in the same area to interact with classmates? Um, that's not something that we provide, although we do have a school directory where you can connect with other Colby families and you can organize that on your own. When you join Colby, you'll also be directed to join a, uh, a Facebook group that is organized based upon your student's graduation date. So then in that Facebook group, you can coordinate and talk with other parents if you'd like to meet up or organize something of that sort, but it's not something that Colby provides. All right. Any other questions, go ahead and get them posted. We have one kindergarten is typically how many classes for the online option? Um, I believe it's, a, I think I, up top of my head, I'm not 100% positive. I think it's four to five that they touch on. And if you go to our website, colby.org, and I believe it will be the, and try to check now for you. I think it's the admissions. Tab and then go to course catalog. And you can see that overview of each grade level for online courses. It is possible to swap out curriculum choices. No, you don't have to know what you want to swap out before you apply. What you do when you pick out courses during course registration is you will enroll in non-Colby courses. You'll write out the textbook you're using, um, any information that the advisor should know, and the advisor will um, work with you on getting it approved and making sure that that is an approved course to take. So something that's done during the course registration process with your advisor. Yes, a lot of our families do use that. So that's um, usually not a problem, but it's something that we just discuss with the advisor after you enroll and you're picking out courses. <laughs> yes, I hear good things about that. All right, any other last minute questions? Go ahead and type them out. If, you know, this is how it works with me, so I'm assuming it might work with other people. If you have follow-up questions and you're not enrolled, you can always email advisors at colby.org. We'll be more than happy to answer any questions you have. 
All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for being with me this afternoon. I hope you have a great rest of your Wednesday and God bless.